impressive. Oh, Lord, it's a boy, Jeff. Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flighter Mouse. Today we have a fantastic Russian design slug made in the USA and sent to us by Goodell Shot Shell Company. Now these guys sell just the slugs, but they have the biggest selection of exotic slugs in the USA. The slug we're testing today is called the Botfly Monolith Hollow Point. The slug is attached to the FS-12 gas seal using a screw and the gas seal stays attached and acts as a stabilizer so the slug flies straight downrange. Now Goodell also sent us along something I've never used before, a gas seal, a supplemental gas seal called the BPGS. Even though this increases the cost of the shell by about 8 cents, this little gas seal is supposed to give you a more efficient seal so you have uh, better burn with slower burning powders, which gives you more consistent barrel pressures and ultimately gives you more consistent velocities, which is exactly what you want if you want tight groups. Ryan Goodell has done a lot of testing of his own and swears by these things. The Botfly weighs in at 33.3 grams and we'll be using Goodell's tried, tested and true recommendation of 30 grains of long shot so we don't even have to guesstimate the powder load this time. Let's head out to the test range and see how these heavy boys perform. Welcome back Tau Flater folks. OG and Jeff behind the camera out here with you today. Today we're shooting a product sent over to us by the Goodell Shot Shell Company and uh, he makes a whole lot of different shotgun shell or shotgun slugs over there and this one happens to be a well what would you say it's kind of a open mouth it's a lead it's it's, it's, it's called like a mo I think he calls it a monolith hollow point okay Monolith hollow monolithic point. hollow point. So that it's got a, it's, the hollow point's like nine millimeters. You can put a nine millimeter down that yeah, hole. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, it just means one lift than monolithic. It's a uh, he calls it the bot fly, which uh, it's a Russian design. I yeah, think. yeah. It sounds more like an African uh, poisonous insect, but the bot fly is a uh, a lead slug. This one's been coated. I, I guess one of the options is you can have it ceramic coated. Yeah, it's a the, ceramic copper factory. brass, some kind of exotic so, coating yeah. it if you want to plant flowers in it or something like that you can have it ceramic coated to make it even fancier we have some of those today they're screwed on to a wad that tails along and that's actually been pretty successful so far with smooth bores at least we're going to try it through the uh, weather bpa 459 as a smooth bore we're going to try it through the remington 870 with a fully rifled barrel just for s's and g's to see how things go in uh, full rifle rarely do these screwed on wads do well with rifling. That's all I can say. In the past, we've tried all kinds of different types of wads. It and tears it, them it, up, it shreds them, it, it Yeah, it does It out. does some funky things. And it, yeah, we always find a lot of melted shard, more melted stretched shards down range, so. Well, it's not that bad, but it's. it's <laughs> That's affecting the performance <laughs> of the uh, of the projector yeah. as it's heading down range, all this shit hanging on the outside. So let's give it a try though, first through the smooth bore and see what it'll do. Brandon is waiting down range. 20 yards away. Okay, first test. Ready. Here we go. Oh boy, that's got a little kick. Yeah, that's a good hit. 14, 24 feet per second. Woo! Y'all. Shot was taken at 20 yards or 1.33 school buses in modern journalistic units of measurement. We can see that the slug is flying just rock steady, stable, and bam, right on the sticker. And if you're new to the channel, uh, we never take any practice shots. This is the very first shot, and it's usually pretty rare to get that kind of uh, precision or accuracy on the very first shot. Usually we have to uh, make some adjustments yards away we were aiming at this little orange sticker on Brennan's shirt you can see right there that we uh, cookie cuttered that thing out bottom right corner that so accuracy that, that, wise, like I was telling you that that's it's gonna be a good day today I think yeah. with that kind of accuracy right out of the package and we didn't even know we were shooting biohazard out here yeah uh, good thing Brendan was wearing a vest this thing had a hell of a kick to it and we sent that slug down caught in the vest we just now dug it out there is what we have let me set it out there look at that little mushroom tip all smashed open. The uh, cavity has been uh, pretty much smashed closed. You can't even see anything about a, a hollow point cavity there. And as we tip it sideways, you can see the 
little wad still attached nothing came detached melted deformed nothing so that yeah i mean other than it's been compressed which is expected under those forces yeah but We're i mean look at that that 10 to 12,000 psi little mushroom of death right there. yeah that's good they if you can hit that little sticker at 20 yards all right we have another one of these blast cloud target shells uh, powder shells from ames targets um some kind of a color we're going to get a gender reveal inside in just a minute you can see that this thing is roughly half the size of a beer can maybe a little bit bigger we're going to put it out here at 20 yards and see if i can uh, hit it. are we just being cocky at this at, usually we wait till the last you know once we figured out the ballistics of these things yep. Whatever you did on the first shot, just do it again. I just pressed the trigger harder. <laughs> made, it, made it more accurate. Okay, let's see if Greg can hit that little thing. Okay, I'm ready. Impressive. Oh Lord, it's a boy, Jeff. Congratulations. <laughs> These are looking good. Impressive. Now from Greg's perspective at 20 yards, the red dot kind of covers up the target like that. It's still a very impressive shot. That's a very small target for a 12 gauge slug of any type. Now with a 12 gauge shotgun, you're hoping for accuracy out to about 50 yards, but with the right optics and the right slug, this thing may very well be able to reach out accurately to over 100 yards. A little low and left. Look at, uh, they've been hitting dead on though. I mean, they both left perfect little cookie cutter around circle. Yeah, they're flying nice through the air. And like I said, we usually don't go to a really small target like that right away, but it's looking good for these things as far as accuracy. What's our next target, Greg? Jeff, I'd like to point out the angry aubergine downrange. The, uh, it's a very rare white aubergine. <laughs> as so they it, say in England. Yeah, and it's angry. So let's go ahead and give it a slug at 20 yards. 20 yards, okay. Isn't that like 18.2 meters? Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. 1394. That one felt like a center hit. It went in a circle. Yeah. Wow. Now this shot really gives you a good idea how much energy this slug carries. It's a beast. Jeff found this uh, 1963 great value tomato sauce can straight out of Al Capone's vault. It is 100% truly a biohazard, so we've labeled it as such. We're gonna place it here on the aluminum cylinder, see if we can't hit that thing end on at 20 yards. So that's the uh, circumference of a beer can, 20 yards. That completely covers that can. Wow. That's, that's optimism right there, but rarely can we hit anything that small at that distance with a 12 gauge shotgun. A 22, yeah, all day long. Okay, I'm rolling and ready. I don't know if I am, but here we go. Nice. Oh, shit. 1450. The targets are getting smaller and Greg's aim is getting better. Slug made it straight down the center of the can. I think we blasted a few flies in the process that were there for the melon. I'm not really sure, but you can see that ring there off on the right there. I think that's the uh, lid from the back side of the can. The pressure just blew a giant hole through that. I found we were shirt. both surprised that you hit it. Yeah, no one's more surprised than this guy that we even hit it. I was telling Jeff off camera, just as I pulled the trigger, I thought, there's no way this hits. But uh, man, look at that. We got it pretty much dead center. But look at the, uh, look how's, at the how's that sticker still on there look too? At the circle it makes though. Yeah. Just a perfect circle of an impact. So those things are flying just perfectly true. Yeah. It'd make a great little piece of jewelry or I don't know, the nipple ring. I don't know what you're gonna do here. Armored nipple ring for the apocalypse. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm impressed. All These right. are fun because they're accurate. They're accurate. So let's see what it'll do against some meat. The flies are waiting for us. Okay. Jeff, we have placed a semi-thawed piece of gray pork shoulder downrange. It is so nasty. It is gross. It's been in your fridge, you said, two weeks? Yeah, then I put, finally put it in the freezer. Yeah, it's like gray colored, and when I opened it, oh God. <laughs> Everything was going great with the tests, and then all of a sudden, tragedy hits, and this happened. And, yeah. Oh, and, uh, oh. oh my God. 
Okay, I'm rolling. Here we go. Los. Oh, you knocked it out of calibration. Yeah. And just like that, that little fall knocked that red dot out of zero, knocked it out of calibration in other words. And we'll have to make some little adjustments to that for the rest of the test. But this is a good opportunity to test out how these things do have a fully rifled barrel. Okay, <clears throat> Greg switched to the full rifling. Hello. Seemed to hit the meat. Now using full rifling, yeah, we have spin now, but is that more stable than going through a smooth bore? Not really, that's a pretty wobbly slug. Now we certainly can't complain about the accuracy, you hit it more or less dead center using iron sights. A lot of people have this idea in their head that if it works well through a smooth bore, it's going to work even better with rifling. That's not always the case, especially with a slug like this that is drag stabilized. Well, that worked out a little better. Rifling definitely made the meat hole better. <laughs> Look at that. You're doing so well. You hit a you hit a little tiny two inch can at 20 yards. I know. I got tired of the accuracy. I just started throwing them on purpose. Okay. So um, yeah, look at that. Shattered the little bone that's in here. But man, look at that. Just I know this is frozen, but just made a gruesome wound track through there. Yeah, I, I set that thing out several hours ago trying to thinking it was going to thaw out and it's still kind of frozen. Yeah, this is disgusting. It's uh, gray. Yeah. If your meat's gray, folks, it's time to either see your doctor <laughs> or run to McDonald's because, damn. That's, that's pretty impressive, though. That's that thing really impressive. stinks, though. That would work good on a, uh, I mean, so far the accuracy of these things and then, of course, the total meat destruction, the uh, TMD factor is, uh, makes these a good candidate for hog hunting or whatever you got planned for your slugs this is a good a candidate yeah okay what's next oh yeah girl i'm fine how you doing okay hey i gotta go <laughs> uh, jeff and i are out here with the new iphone 15 they're getting larger and larger i think it's ridiculous we have set the new iphone here behind a water jug with the little biohazard sticker i'm gonna aim for the sticker for accuracy again Let's see if we can't uh, pull that back together and then we're gonna see this is kind of a test to see if any of the um if, if the slug fragments at all. We've seen it mushroom already, but we're gonna see what it does to this iPhone screen behind the jug. Maybe it'll break up, maybe it'll pass on through as one big giant projectile. I'm telling you, we use the most expensive targets on this channel. I know, we just went out and bought this only for this project. It was like $5,000, you know? All right, kids in Africa could have talked to no one on this phone. <laughs> okay, we're gonna find out if you're Red dot's actually out of zero, or, <laughs> or if it's my, some uh, other excuse we can use. My finger. Yeah, your finger's out of zero. When you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, okay, I think you're on zero again. Got the jug, why don't you check it out in the high speed, slow speed. These slugs have fantastic stability out of a smoothbore shotgun. Using rifling doesn't really help much. And that's actually a good thing because the vast majority of people in the world have smoothbore shotguns. In some countries, you can't even buy a rifled barrel for your shotgun. Now, the flies were getting really bad. They were all over the table. And we saved the soapy jug of water to shoot to kind of wash the table off. And it seemed to do a pretty good job of doing that. How you get rid of flies, I guess. Yeah, you know, just as I was pulling the trigger, I was thinking how this was like a drive-in movie for flies. They're all sitting here watching <laughs> this big, giant movie. It blasted the red jug, and by the way, it hit centered but a little high. Yeah. Probably my pull. But look what it did. All that red juice just caught them. Red this is water. water, soap water. Yeah, well, they don't like soap water. Nope. And then it went through the TV. It went through the TV. We've got two impacts here. I don't know if we've got, this looks to be the slug here because it's nice we'll, and round. Well, flip it around. Maybe the, the wad is separated in the water or something or? It's possible. Oh, okay. We've got more or less one exit hole, but you can also see the exit hole is perfectly round on the bottom as if the slug is still traveling nose first. Maybe it was just the wad that came in here afterwards. Yeah, it could have separated 
it's sort you can tell it's kind of a little cylindrical shape. It's like not a, very deep. Yeah, okay. Re rectangular shape, so it's probably the plastic. But okay, what's next, Greg? So Jeff, we have put some uh, large water jugs out at 40 yards, 50 yards, and 60 yards. That's like two meters and 12 meters or something. I don't even know. 500 cabbages. 500 cabbages. Yeah. Um, 40, 50, and 60 yards. I'm pretty confident I can hit 40 and 50. We'll see about 60. These things have been crazy accurate so far. Except when so, something happened to your red dot. Yeah. They dropped it or whatever. We but won't talk about I've that. made recalibrations. Uh, yeah, if the calibrations are right Scientific or Scientific calibrations. So the jugs are like, they would be equivalent to a very small pig. So if we can hit these small pigs out there at 40, 50, and 60 yards, it's a good round. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Let's take a look. Just using a red dot, which is not the most accurate thing. We'll just take one shot at a time, review the high speed footage, see where you're hitting, and see if you need to make any adjustments at that range. Okay, 40 yards. 40 yards on the orange dot. Okay. okay, let me see where that. I think you're still out of calibration. Orange dot. Okay. Yep, the shotgun is still shooting to the right a little bit. Greg will need to make a little bit of adjustment and see if he can do better. Okay, he made some minor adjustments and I'm ready. Well, it's now shooting a little bit to the left, but look at that massive shockwave being dragged across the ground. That thing is still supersonic at 40 yards. Okay, now that is 50 yards? 50 yards. And you made another adjustment. Okay, so may not hit it, or maybe you hit both drugs at one shot. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. May not hit it, or maybe you hit both drugs at one shot. <laughs> well, I guess I should have bought a lottery ticket that day because I rarely predict anything like that happening. Greg got a pretty accurate shot on the 50 yard jug, and somehow the slug kept going and hit the 60 yard jug. As always, we appreciate it if you rate the video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. We're one of the few channels that actually read our comments. I mean, why bother leaving a comment if the video creator doesn't even read them? It's the 40 yard one? Yeah. Didn't do too well. This one I missed completely on the right first round. Overcompensated. No fault of the slugs, because up no, till no. the point where you dropped the, or bumped the, the shotgun off the table. So I over-dialed it to the left, and then I skimmed the edge, but we killed the, uh, killed the bar. Let's step out here to 50. We actually did very, much better on that one. After we reverse counter sub corrected, we ended up with just touching the edge of the, uh, of the orange sticker again. Flip around. We have just we have what just one exit hole. There's no sign of it yeah. expanding or fragmenting or anything like that. So we're pretty close on at 50 yards. And again, the slugs are 100% accurate. It's the shotgun and me that are inaccurate. Yeah. Here's the cool thing. We were out of slugs, and we were going to have to forfeit the 60 yard. Yep, yep. Carry all that water all the way back. <laughs> or drink it. Yeah. There's a little soap in there. It's all right. It keeps you regular. So the, um, the, the jugs weren't exactly lined up. They were staggered a little bit, but good Lord if uh, the 50 yard slug didn't also take out the 60 yard slug. And then flip it around with, is there any kind of? Nope, just one. So it, it didn't, obviously it didn't fragment or anything no, I think going through that just, first jug. Yeah, they're probably mushrooming like we saw in Brandon's vest earlier. They're staying together, which is a good sign. That's what you want is nice heavy weight going through your, uh, going through your. Look, look at the hole though. That's, that's, it, there's no sign of mushrooming. No, it's flying through. It's true. a small, it's the same size hole that... And remember, this is after hitting and flying through the 50-yard jug. It's yeah. still flying true, so... So... That's actually kind of surprising. Okay, that's a little better. I, 
having something to catch it, a piece of sheet metal and Kevlar behind it. Should catch it. Okay, I'm rolling. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to try to find a clean spot. Just dead center somewhere. Well, uh, dead center is where the other one is. That's all right. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, it's still on the table. Dead center is where the other one is. That's all right. Well, the botfly made a pretty impressive temporary wound cavity through our ballistic gel, but it easily made it all the way through. And you may have noticed that the gel block stayed on the table this time. What does that tell us? It means the slug is very good at penetrating deeply through targets, but doesn't do a very good job at dumping energy into the target. And in the world of ballistics, you really can't have both. Now normally a hollow point is designed to expand and dump a lot of energy, but in this case, the botfly really hasn't expanded at all. It's just flattened out after hitting the Kevlar and sheet metal at the end of the target. So this answers the question, when is a hollow point not really a hollow point? So Jeff tells me it ends up, down, it hit down here, did some pretty decent damage down here. There's no big, uh, what do you call it, energy dump, no big temporary well, wound cavity. Well, there's a lot of ripping and tearing along there. Yeah, there the is. gel. There is, but you don't see that big giant flower that you see from a lot of expanding bullets. Right. However, it tore through here. It kind of went downwards. Exited down low. You can see it struck our little piece of uh, safety Kevlar and then struck our safety metal. Never it, never punching through. Yeah. So I mean, it, it had enough energy. It, it was still a lot of energy hitting it. It, it. And the reason, you know, we don't strap the gel block down is to show how much energy is actually hitting the gel block. Yeah. When it flies off the table, that means it has dumped a lot of energy. When it stays on the table, not a lot of energy dump. It's a really good indicator. And nobody believes this out there in YouTube land, but pouring a water bottle on here and washing a little bit of sand off of it is way easier than all the strapping down and then all, right. all the- Right. I don't know why it. they don't just you can just wash the, the gel off like right. like it's skin or something. Yeah. You know, you should have scrapped it it's down. It's not a big deal, folks. No, it's just a water bottle. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yeah. Boom, we're done. Anyway, I appreciate you making it this far into the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.